athletically impressive man on the planet. That's what makes him so great. That should have come with a disclaimer. Maybe not try that at home. Let, <laughs> let Ryan Krauser do that and just uh, be in awe of it. We'll be in awe of this next race because Lameka Gurma is here, the Tokyo Olympic silver medalist in the steeplechase, but also a world record holder now, part of that fabulous summer performance we saw in the Diamond League circuit. Came out after a fantastic indoor season last year and just set the world on fire. A fantastic runner, obviously with the numbers to back it up, but those medals, the gold is kind of slipped through his hands a little bit in the steeplechase. So again, looking to come out, maintain that pressure and that confidence, and this man is fit. Edwin Kurgott, last week alone, the former Iowa State Cyclone came out. He ran 12.57, Paul, in the 5K. So he is fit and should be up next to Lameka Garma most of this race. Was the NCAA cross country champion when he competed at Iowa State. Also in this field, the Canadian third from the back of your pack. That's Ben Flanagan who checked off the Olympic standard in the 5,000 and a fast 5,000 indoors in Boston a week or so ago. You know, before they had a decent football team, the University of Michigan's had some great runners over the years and he won an NCAA title for the Wolverines a few years ago at 10,000 meters. This set up to be a fast race, and why not when you have the world record holder in this event, in this race in Gurma? You always want to put it out there that maybe he can take a little bit off of that current mark that he set a year ago, mid-February, 723.81. So to do that, you put those pace lights out and light them up, and you also ask Jack Ansey of Australia and the American Derek Johnson who ran at Virginia, who's the leader there, to take him through the first 400 swiftly. You know, we talked about earlier in the broadcast how scary it is that Grant Holloway is so good, yet he's just now entering the prime of his career. Germa's only 23 years old. He's relatively new to this type of, of racing, to being on the biggest stages. He is just and could be on the cusp of being one of the greatest at this distance, this 3,000 distance, the steeplechase. And this would be the first step along that path for the 2024 season on the road to Paris. So as we keep the lights going and the pace going here with Johnson in front and Gurma in tow. Trey, let's look back at that other field event we had, same as the women in the long jump, Javon Harrison thinking of another trip to an Olympic Games. Another trip, maybe in two events. He's the best combination jumper in the history of the jumps. A fantastic high jumper at a silver medal in the high jump last summer at Worlds. This was his best long jump of the day. Right there, the LSU graduate. 25-10 was his best. And this was Kerry McLeod, who's They've locked horns several times. Kerry McLeod jumped for Tennessee, then made his way over to Arkansas. Jumped at many a meet against one another, but that first jump, 26-11 from Kerry McLeod, set the bar a bit too high. No one was able to catch it. Well, that wraps up the field event coverage here in Boston today. More action at Milrose coming up a week from today. Looking forward to that, highlighted by a men's pole vault competition that should be good. Meantime, here on the track, they're going to stay with those lights as long as they can, hopefully get as many laps as they can from the pace setters here. But right now, it is Gurma. And then Edwin Kurgat. Trying to stay in the mix here with the world record holder as the first of the two pace setters steps off the track with nine laps to go. You know, we always focus on kind of the last several laps of are they going to get the world record or not? Well, this is where we find out if they're going to make a real, real run at it, an honest effort at it. As it looks like the pace setter has upped the ante here. Germa's going with him. Kurgat's really struggling to to keep in tow. There's a little bit of a gap forming, but Gurma looks very, very comfortable. His shoulders are down, his hands are down, his face is relaxed. This is where they can make up that time and get back on schedule here. 
And the hot pace beginning to take its toll on Kurgot, who's fallen away and out of the back there of that lead group. You can see the separation between them and the rest of the field. Max Thorworth of Germany back there leading that group with the Irish champion, Andrew Koskaran, and Charles Philibert Tibito of Canada. Seven laps to go. And now, finally, the Australian steps aside. So Gurma against the lights in a redo of that just finished men's 1,000. The world record holder, the Ethiopian crowd now waving their flags to the top of the final turn as they wind it up with six laps to run. Maybe this is a lonely place to be. This is you versus yourself for 1,200 meters. Five and a half more laps for the Mecca Gurma, but Edwin Kurgat is not giving up. He's not relinquishing this race. He's not fading back to the pack. He's still got his foot on the gas. Trying to maintain this gap if he can. He's losing just about a half a second per lap right now on Gurma, who is now outpacing the lights. As he's on the back stretch, now you see CBT. Charles Philibert Tibito of Canada has moved into third, but he's a full 100 meters behind Gurma, who is laying waste to the pace lights now as the crowd begins to sense some magic happening here at the track at New Balance. Four laps to go. His, his pace and his cadence, every, nothing has changed so far, Paul. He is clicking off just about 30-second flat laps, 29 highs, 29 and change. Everything is so smooth. He's trying to stay within himself and not expend too much energy while trying to maintain that pace. And now maybe just losing a little bit of pace as those lights begin to catch up just a little bit. You know, in the last three world championships, he has finished second to Sufyan El Bakali of Morocco. So outdoors, he really hasn't had the success that he wanted, though that world record helped last summer. Indoors, that world record last year. But now he looks like maybe that pace beginning to take its toll trying to hold on to the lights here, and the crowd trying to help him down the front straightaway. It's getting louder and louder and louder. The crowd trying to will on Gurma to something incredibly special. Lap and a half to go now. Kurgat running a phenomenal race in second. And then behind them, CBT, Ben Flanagan, and Koskara now moving into third. But Gurma now reaches the bell, 6.58.96. World record or not, pace or not, this is an impressive dominating run. He's over 50 meters ahead of the field right now in a 3,000, in a short in a short distance race. This is awesome. As it comes down the final stretch, you see the time on the clock. It will not be a world record. He gave it an honest effort, though, on this day in Boston and entertains the crowd with one of the fastest 3,000s ever. Says, no, I'm not ready for the flowers. OK, now I'll take them. I'm ready to celebrate a meet record for Lameka Gurma of Ethiopia. And lifetime best will begin to unfold on the uh, finished results as Gurma sets a blistering pace and everyone else on the track benefits from it. You know, congrats to all those other runners, but what we just saw was the different class that Lameka Gurma has put himself in over the last couple of seasons. He is the world record holder here. But still, that was a race with just himself in those lights. That was incredible to watch. There you see the final results behind Gurma. The next five athletes all with lifetime best.